Hello, my name is Damien Thompson and this is James Northway and we are here today to tell you about the latest development for MEC Momentum, our proprietary research and planning approach for understanding the purchase journey. We're going to tell you about how we're now taking Momentum data and combining it with technology and above all creativity to create a new predictive tool called MEC Velocity. Momentum tells us about how people behave throughout the purchase journey, but the question we've been asking ourselves is, what if you could understand how consumers will behave in the future? But before we get to that, we'll show you a short film that explains what MEC Momentum tells us about how people behave right now. For nearly a hundred years, people used a funnel to describe the purchase journey. But if you want to understand how best to influence your customers and grow your brand, you have to take a very different view. MEC Momentum is our proprietary research and planning approach to quantify how people make purchase decisions, to identify the changes in strategy and communication that will grow your brand. It uses groundbreaking research into the psychology of choice from over 200,000 respondents across 47 categories around the world. Today's purchase journey is not a funnel. It's a continuous cycle, so we're always moving towards a purchase. In daily life, people form positive and negative beliefs about brands long before they buy them. The result is that nearly half of all customers already think they know what they're going to buy. We call this passive stage bias, and it's a powerful shortcut in purchase decision making. MEC Momentum shows you what builds passive stage bias, what makes your brand top of mind, and how to keep it there. Triggers are the needs or wants that move people from passive to active when making a purchase decision in your category. In the active stage, we can see what people do to help them make a decision, as well as which touch points are most useful, and the things that stop them buying your brand. MEC Momentum also shows you the missed opportunity, the people who should have bought your brand but didn't. We'll find the right messages and the right touch points to build your brand and win them back. MEC Momentum reveals the connections between people's perceptions of your brand, their behavior, and how they use media in relation to your category. We can show you how your consumers really make decisions, how you perform against your competitors, and what you can do about it. Does your brand have momentum? The key thing to take from the video is the importance of passive stage buyers, the incredible number of people who have already made up their mind before they start thinking about buying something. The reason passive stage bias is so important is the effect it has on people's behaviour throughout the journey. And that's why our clients ask us, OK, what happens if I shift passive stage bias? How will that change my consumer's behaviour and ultimately my market share? And that is the question that MEC Velocity answers. And that's what James is now going to tell you about. So in order to answer this question, uh, we originally tried more traditional modelling techniques like regression or logistic regression that worked top down. Uh, and in fact, it failed. It didn't work. And the reason it didn't work is because when we're working with momentum data, we're working with individual level data. We're working bottom up. So agent based modelling is different because instead of working top down uh, with big chunks of data like weekly sales data, we work bottom up and we actually model people. So in our case, agents are actually people. Um, but a good way, and agent-based modelling is a technique that we borrow from uh, biology and ecology and social sciences, so it's an established technique. Um, and a nice way to explain it is actually to talk about biology and to give you an example of some birds, believe it or not. Some of you might be familiar with images like this. This is a flock of starlings or a type of blackbird uh, at dusk. And in case you're not, we have a video which shows this happening. Uh, and so, as you can see, what you're actually seeing is uh, chaotic, beautiful in some ways, patterns emerging. Uh, but it's, if you were trying to build a model to explain how these shapes formed and how they evolved and how they came to be, you can imagine that might be pretty difficult. And in fact, for a number of years, no one really understood this at all. Uh, but by using agent-based modelling, we're able to explain uh, and predict, in fact, the shapes that appear and that you can see here. Uh, and in fact, it's not quite this simple but it can be explained very simply with three rules. So if you model each of those birds independently and you set each of those birds rules and the rules are roughly move in the same direction as your neighbours, 
uh, remain close to your neighbours and don't bump into your neighbours and you set them up in a simulation, you run it, you get exactly that type of output you saw on your screen. So you can see how by building some relatively simple rules and working bottom up, understanding how people, or in this case birds, interact and move, you can explain something that seems very chaotic and complicated. So let's talk about applying that to marketing now and how MVC Velocity works. So we are using agent-based modelling, we're using rules, we're not looking at birds, we're looking at people, and each person has its own rule set. And the data for most of the rules comes from the MEC Momentum study, and we plug that in. Um, so I need to just set this screen up, and then what we'll do is we'll run you um, a little clip of one of the simulations and show you how it works. So Damien talked about the uh, active stage and the passive stage, which we can see here in this diagram. And on this diagram, we also have five tracks. So we have five brands in the telco sector, uh, and this example uh, is in the UK. So we have a yellow brand, a red brand, a blue brand, a green brand, and a purple brand. And what we're going to do is we're going to run the model, and we've set up the rules. The rules are different for every single agent in the simulation. There's um, just under 3,000 agents in the simulation, and the data is almost exclusively coming from the momentum study that we built and that the MEC Velocity built onto. onto. So in this top right hand corner you're going to see time moving forward, it's going to run for three years, you're going to see that move and you're going to see agents moving around the track and so if they're on the yellow track it means they're a customer of the yellow brand, if they're on the red track they're a customer of the red brand and their colour indicates who they were a customer of previously in the purchase cycle. Um, you'll notice that agents move slowly through the passive stage because in this category the passive stage takes on average two years and they move very quickly through the active stage because the active stage takes on average two weeks. Um, and I guess another place to look will be over here where we'll see each week um, the market share essentially panning out over time. So let's run the simulation and see what happens. So straight away you can see the agents moving on the system. You can see time moving on up here. So we're in April now and now May of 2015 and our agents are moving around the system. And also in the bottom left hand corner you can see our market share. So, and we're interested in the yellow brand. So the yellow brand is our client, and we're interested in understanding how that market evolves. And then in a minute, what we're going to do is show you a difference that we make in passive stage bias. So at the moment, the yellow brand is the third biggest brand, and it's vying with the blue brand for fourth position, essentially. Um, and we can see people moving around the screen. Something else to mention is if you see an agent in a in large scale, that means that actually uh, an agent sent a message across to that agent. So we've actually got agents talking to other agents and making recommendations in this model. So we'll let it run. There we go. And now we go back to the setup screen and we're able to adjust the passive stage bias for our yellow brand. So in this case, originally we had a passive stage bias of 14% and we're going to change the passive stage bias quite a lot because we're going to try and show uh, a difference in this demonstration. So from 14% to 21%, so that's a 50% increase in passive stage bias. And now we rerun the simulation. And we're going to run through time, we're going to run through the same three years, but where I'll be looking is here. So you can see from this point, uh, the yellow brand is picking up market share. It's, it's acquiring more customers per week. They're switching from other brands. And over time, we see that move. So now at this point in time, Maybe uh, this is a year in, we're moving to market position two, past the red brand, and we continue to move in this direction. And over here we have information around where we're gaining and losing customers to and from, so which brands. So you can actually see that the purple brand is losing quite a lot of customers, and the other brands are still relatively stable. So we know our brand, the yellow brand, is taking customers in the main from the purple brand, and that's, that's born out here. And then we move to effectively a new stable state. So it's not completely stable, but at this level we are now the second um, largest brand by market share. And if we go back to the setup screen, we've got two scenarios, the original scenario and the second scenario. And we have uh, both run to the same point in time, then we change passive stage bias and you can see the difference in sales over time. And that's the key point. So we are showing and simulating how sales are changed over time by changing passive stage bias. So I think, What's interesting about this is uh, we can simulate changes from passive stage bias into sales. We can say how many more sales a client will be getting and we can say when over time those sales will come in. It's not just about predicting changes in sales over time from passive stage bias. Because we're using agent-based modelling and because we're looking at it bottom-up, we're able to slice and dig into these results at different audience levels. So say we wanted to understand how sales are changed for young people, how sales are changed for a certain segment, how sales are changed for a particular brand, 
uh, how sales are changed by a region. We're able to dig in and understand all those things and therefore we're able to action those findings later on in audience-based planning systems. So it's about prediction, predicting and simulating the future on changes in passive stage bias and we can dig in at an audience level even to understand that. And that is MEC Velocity.